Uh, 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 it's a great pleasure to visit uh, the university and a lot of uh, good friends. It's my pleasure to present uh, after a very important uh, presentation by the military house. Uh, some of the picture is showing I was uh, in Taiyan uh, National Hospital uh, last year and also early this year. So this is my service to you. Uh, part of my uh, appreciation with uh, Taiwan uh, National Hospital is that uh, I did work in Vietnam uh, in 2021 during the COVID period of time. So that was the book. That was the book I published. And I learned that it's going to be in Vietnamese uh, copy very soon. Uh, I hope uh, that book was, uh, uh, can be a good reflection of um, uh, my uh, work. Uh, and early this year, I received a badge from, uh, I received a Ho Chi Minh badge. So really, I am dedicated to uh, build up a partnership with Vietnam very, very much. So I'm a former president of the Asian Health Literacy Association and this hospital already set up the ACLA office uh, early last year, uh, last year. And the current president uh, is Dr. Domandun, is right over here. So I will certainly talking about health literacy with nursing healthcare sciences very much. To me, nursing is nursing care, it's care. And Without nursing, the medical care will be inadequate. So we need care, nursing care, so much. But what we are doing is helping the patient, which do not understand the health care. They do not understand the disease. So health literacy starts to play a very important role. Bill Gates said that if you get health, then you have opportunity for literacy, right? Without health, we cannot get literacy. Health first, then literacy. Once you have literacy, then you have a chance to bring the new tool of communication. And let people reach out and access to latest advance. Bill Gates, why he is successful? Because he is doing communication business, and which is about literacy. All right, so health literacy by WHO is a stronger predictor of individual health status in then uh, income, employment, status, education, ratio, ethnic group. So to me, health literacy is a skill of communication between healthcare provider and the recipient, the public, the families. So we are doing the same business like uh, Bill Gates is doing. In the United States, we have a good colleague from USA. They started a health literacy journey about 30 years ago. In the USA today, I think it's many other countries. In Asia, in Taiwan, in Vietnam, we did a lot of survey, even in Europe. Health literacy is still far behind. Means the health communication is far inadequate. Now, in USA, emergency room, with a lot of patients, they without good health literacy. And without good health literacy, hospital have more stays and less likely to follow treatment plan and also have a high mortality rate. I think that phenomenon happened to many other countries, not only in the USA, in Taiwan, in Asia. So we're talking about smart hospital, smart health care, and smart nursing care. I think it's all the same. With, with good health literacy, we will provide much better smart care, smart nursing care, smart hospital, and uh, I have a quote for health literacy. The value of health literacy is on the right hand side. There are three. There are four elements of the health literacy. People with good health literacy, they would less likely to get disease. First one. So we need to provide good health literacy to the patient. Second, people with good health literacy, when they are sick, they recover, they receive better health care the recovery much easier. The third one, which means health is very interesting, how to reduce the medical cost. People with good health literacy, they choose better health care service. 
they understand how the nurses tell them. So healthcare service is more efficient. Number four, number four, healthcare profession, we are all us, we are exhausted, too much problem. So a patient with health literacy, we will be much more competent. We feel, feel more satisfied in our profession. So those are the four elements I see, and I'm going through this, and I will adding AI into the health literacy. Okay, so I uh, I like to show you some example I did before in Malawi, in Africa. Before there's no uh, there's no uh, patient information system in in some uh, country in Africa even today. So we design use a fingerprint, and fingerprint we everyone has a fingerprint, but until recently fingerprint become information for the communication for registration. So with a fingerprint, we can put health information connected with ICT or follow up with patient with HIV. That was, uh, uh, we did that uh, published in Lancet a few years ago. That's another study I did in Taipei Medical University. We were in East, uh, East, uh, Swatini. Swatini is in eastern part of Africa. And they have a European WHO laboratory for testing HIV. You see, very good laboratory. But a patient received a blood test in far away and through motorcycle, three hours motorcycle. And this motorcyclist, this motorcycle goes through mountain by mountain. Three days later, they bring the blood to the laboratory. And lab has a result, okay? And I visit Eswatini and see this report was there three weeks already, okay? Blood come. So you say there's no report, and uh, we did a very simple uh, study. Use the ICT in Taipei Medical University, we help put the health information. Send a message to the doctor, which did the prescription of the blood testing. So that was very simple. So communication, communication. If we use uh, ICT well, we got a very good result. Nowadays, we still have a lot of problems, right? We, we take a, a patient child. Okay, we put in the in the chart of blood <laughs> in Vietnam, in many countries, in Taiwan also, and we have a lot of X-ray films, right? Hundreds, thousands. It's impossible to retrieve the film to help the patient understand. So we have to digitalize them. Okay. So without digitalization, we will be very exhausted, and we cannot achieve the goal. So. We, I'm going to bring the IT into healthcare and the nursing and the health literacy. So uh, we have a lot of information like this. And with the AI algorithm, we start to using this useful information into healthcare, continuing healthcare service. So this is the whole function of the AI. I'm not going to into detail, but based on what we are using, you have yellow, right? You have yellow connected with uh, all your friend, and you use uh, banking, use a facial recognition with the AI already, and you have it. now you are in charge of the robot. So AI already in our life, in our living, very much. But they need to come to healthcare service. So healthcare service with AI, they can be used for many many ways. I'm going to give you quite a lot of examples which already implement. In part of Vietnam, uh, our senior advisor of the ministry already mentioned, and also in Taiwan, in many other parts of the world. And I hope this AI technology, AI is assistance. We all need assistance. When we are very busy, we call our assistant to come to help. So now we call AI to come in to help us. In Taiwan, in Taiwan, we are using AI for healthcare, but not too much. Not too much until 2024. It's still not too much. Maybe less than one percent of health expenditure. We're going to increase a lot more in AI. Okay, we talk about COVID because AI already in healthcare, but we are very reluctant to take them. And COVID really giving us a good time. Facial recognition for patient tracing, etc. So after 2021, 2022. AI in healthcare start to moving up. That is the good timing. So now we are in early phase. And this is some example of the 
AI assistant, patient recognition, as the, uh, re reporting, etc. I'm going to go into a little more detail about all these uh, 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 procedures. Okay, now I have to read the uh, <laughs> Vietnamese now. <laughs> in in uh, so in nursing care, in care, first one is patient monitoring. You know, we have a lot of monitoring. You know, most of us we have received a training. We take care of one of patient. Spend 10 minutes about one individual. We have a lot of information, but information too much. Really, we cannot do, do that because when the patient more and more come in, you spend a lot of time, they're waiting for us, and we need to get the AI into that. So now there's a lot of monitoring, automatically monitoring, which without us too much attention. So they need to come into the nursing practice. And the second one is schedule manage. You know, uh, I also work in the hospital, my nursing. Sometimes I spend one hour working in a piece of paper, say, okay, Monday evening from uh, night to tomorrow, uh, it's you, okay? Uh, 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 Tuesday, it's you. So they are struggling for all this scheduling, scheduling for our job in the hospital and also in the world and all the clinic. Takes so much time. We need AI. When that was too much job for us, we need to AI. I believe in USA, many of this already in practice, that uh, scheduling, scheduling not only for us, our duty, but also for the patient to come in. The number three is clinical decision support. So now we have a lot of more information from laboratory, from CT, MRI, from EKG, etc. All this information, how can they integrate? for how to provide uh, to the patient service. So you, you're going to have a lot of more information, okay? Because the uh, instrument technology is already there. And how can we take them into our practice uh, to save our time? The number four is medical management, okay? Now we have a lot of uh, treatment uh, uh, possibility. Cancer therapy, tumor therapy, uh, uh, cell therapy, etc. So these are also very good for uh, patient uh, management, medical and management. And also, you know, operation room, very complicated, right? You have a lot of information. Uh, I know there's a specialty in nursing, post-OP nursing, right? You have to look at all this monitor and how to integrate this information into uh, really practice. I don't know why the time is not running, so it means I don't have time, but I have to run very fast. <laughs> and so, number five is the post anesthesia. And number six, the hand off. Hand off is that when we look at a patient, right, I'm finished by five o'clock, and I'm going to spend one hour to hand all this information to the one to take care of my job. And actually, injury is not paid. That additional one hour, you hand over information to the next one, she or he is going to take care of patient. Usually it's not paid, right? In, in Taiwan, they complain about this. So we need to have a good system of information transfer about one individual patient to our, uh, someone is going to take over our duty. So that is very, very important already. Instead of writing in a piece of paper, you need an AI assistant. Now I'll show you some example in our hospital. I also work in, in, uh, in Taiwan, in the Chosun Hospital. They use all kinds of AI uh, already five years, and every year we uh, spend a lot more time and energy to increase, integrate the, uh, the AI technology. So, you know, in Taiwan we are in short of nurses, so every nurse is like an angel, like a Buddha. They have many, many hands. Huh? <laughs> How can they have a lot of hands? So they need to be uh, with the AI assistant. So you don't see a lot of them, and when the patient doing a patient run, you have a lot of AI assistant technology going to the diagnostic CT, etc. So uh, this is uh, one of my my colleague. He's uh, doing uh, sonography AI technology, right? You know, sonography radiology take a lot of time to train the specialist. But with uh, if the specialist is so high, you don't have a lot of specialists. <laughs> that is the problem. So how can AI helping other non-specialists, GP or RN, to really come into uh, decision-making for the, for the decision? So he used all kinds of sonography, digital, 
digital recording and doing AI synergize and to provide um, uh, quick uh, analysis and decision making for, I mean, this is a real case. He is helping a uh, patient with uh, cardiac arrest. Another example is that already this instrument already licensed in, in Vietnam, already implemented in Ho Chi Minh City. That, uh, okay, usually we have a bone marrow. This is for bone disease, uh, degenerative disease, uh, fracture, but it's uh, osteoporosis. And many, many you know, people, I believe in Vietnam also, you go into aging society very much. And particular women after 50, 60, they are getting higher incidence of osteoporosis. And osteoporosis without any attention easily got a fracture. And when people get a fracture, you really losing your quality of life, right? So they are they are using uh, DEXA for bone uh, osteoporosis for a long time. But uh, DEXA is very very expensive and also with radiation. So they use traditional uh, KUB. Use a traditional KUB. You take a physics exam. You have a KUB. You have a uh, aerospine, and they use AI and reach about ninety five percent precision as good as Dexa. In, in that case, you don't spend a lot of time to buy ex expensive machines. You also can provide a service to the community hospital or to a uh, remote uh, health clinic. That, that's already licensed in Vietnam. Okay, I hope it will come to uh, a time very soon. Okay, AI also helping us in, in, uh, in, in short term is in the big rural areas, about two million population, very big, maybe similar to Taiwan. Uh, we don't have a lot of hospitals, and we don't have a lot of uh, doctor nurses going to. So we use AI to decide how to follow up this individual patient when they discharge, or they have to come to our hospital. We use AI to arrange, they don't come to our hospital in the wrong way. Also, we send them home, and we understand where are their resources. So, and this is for cancer, I believe that's for cancer. Uh, we have to setting up different continuous monitoring for uh, cardiovascular disease, etc. So you AI to do healthcare administration. It's beyond the hospital. It's uh, connecting uh, all the uh, province. And there are a lot of more AI assistant technology for birth control, for, for serious uh, uh, skin injuries, uh, skin disease. AI assistant diagnostic and, and how to treat the uh, skin lesion chronic uh, liberal skin lesion already assist uh, implement in AI. I mean, there's uh, some company in Taiwan that are doing this, and also for bedridden patient. Okay, you put a sensor for the bed, different part of bed. So if they got the uh, 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 if they got the ulcer uh, uh, over the bedridden area. So this will be very difficult for us to take care of that. So there's a sensor, there's a sensor about which part of the uh, body they are not moving and you have to assist in them. Actually, this is, uh, and this is for, usually we need a very special cardiology, but now use a new AI machine stethoscope. You can do uh, for RN and uh, GP to really uh, giving a good diagnostic of, uh, of the lung and cardiac disease. And also, this is also available. I believe this also come to Vietnam already. Use a uh, remote area, you don't have an eye doctor. You don't have a lot of eye doctor. I don't know how many eye doctor in Taiwan. Uh, maybe in rural area, you don't have eye doctor. But use nurses using the machine, very easy in the machine, not to complicate. You send an image to the eye doctor special to do final diagnosis. So that's really uh, going to, we don't need to wait too much uh, and, and to give a good diagnosis. And also this is for uh, mental health evaluation. Some of patients in the uh, psychiatry department, they are taking medication, they are aware, well, but without regular medication, they become weird, right? And by looking at the face, by looking at the face, you can see whether they smile or they smile too much. And with this, it's helping the mental health uh, evaluation. And so there's a lot of a new AI tool uh, to come for the patient, helping the communication between uh, health care provider and the, the client. 
This is my last one, right? I mentioned four points of health literacy. Is uh, if people with good health literacy, they don't get disease easily. When they got a disease, they recover much better. And the major health hospital do not spend too much money, right? You save your money, you put it in efficiency. And we healthcare profession, more competent. We are happy, satisfied our job, right? It's not easy, right? To, to be safe by our job is that we provide good care to the patient. So I see AI has to come to healthcare service. AI will be very much important imprint for nursing care, for good care. And in between, we also using AI to provide better communication between healthcare provider like all of you and the patient and the community. So that is the function of uh, health interest and AI together to enhance the health care service for now and in the future. And I hope, uh, I hope uh, because uh, Thailand National Hospital already have uh, APA, Asian Health Literacy Association office over here. You're going to have a lot of experts in this, in this area. And I hope in the future we start to take in AI assistive technology to our health care service and improve our healthcare performance. Uh, thank you so much, Singh Gaman, for your patience. Thank you.